Hi, Mike Kennedy, M005 Kennedy with you today. Today we're talking about the Yankee developer tank. Now, this is this is ancient. Okay. I'm 63 when I started in photography, say uh no, I'm 61. <laughs> When I started in the photography over 40 years ago, this tank was being made, okay? Uh, and what it is, is it's a very simple thing. It's a plastic uh, tank. It's got little rivets, little divots in it, and there's a metal spring. So you can set it for 120. Uh, 127. Let's see the different sizes here. I forget which one is. Okay, yeah, 127, 126, 20, 35 millimeter. But the trick is this tank can be set to 16 millimeter. Now this is one you, you put the film in and you kind of walk it in with your fingers. It's really very easy to do and easy to do in the dark. Well, this, yeah, this isn't a stainless steel tank. It's not super super high quality. This was like $17. And let me give you a little story about it. I had one of these and I wanted to get back into doing some, uh, if you look at my other video about the Minolta 16, that takes 16 millimeter film. There were a lot of, usually you think of 16 millimeter film being motion picture film, and no it was. And what they did at one time, this is before 110, they decided to make cameras that would fit 16 millimeter film and so they came out with things with like the Minolta uh, and various other cameras that would take 16 millimeter and then you could just re-spool a 16 millimeter into a some type of cartridge put it in this camera and use it so I want to use my old camera uh, someone actually uh, my brother actually gave me a camera that he got and I had one like the model to 16 once, so I wanted to, thought it would be really fun to try again, but I couldn't find my tank. I guess maybe it went out somewhere. So anyway, I send for tank. And as soon as I get it, I realize that there's something wrong with it. Number one, there's supposed to be a thermometer in here. And number two, it won't turn inside the tank. It's, it's too, it's like too big. So I, I, you know, I send an email to the company and they say, oh my goodness, we're so sorry you're not happy. And they say, we'll send you out another one immediately. You can keep the old one. And I say, okay, well, take some months and months before they get any more of these. Because I'm sure there's some person making these in their cellar from an old, you know, some old injection molding equipment that, uh, you know, was made during World War One. who knows what, but you know, this thing's been around a long time. So anyway, finally I get the sealed box. You could tell it's in the Yankee box, so they never open it. I open it up and it's exactly the same. So I figure, well, now I'm stuck. This is, I've looked for 16 millimeter stainless steel reels, and any if I find anything, people want like $50 for them. I find equipment to do longer lengths of 16 millimeter film, you know, like to do 25, 100, 400 feet, but they're, they're really expensive. People are saying, selling them on eBay at quite a premium price because, you know, there are some people who still want to do that and I guess they feel they're willing to pay for it. Although you do have the sucker principle. You gotta realize there's a sucker principle that goes on eBay and it goes especially with books, used books too. If a book is out of print, there'll always be someone with a sucker's price. In other words, one time I wanted to buy this book that originally cost $10. I go online and I see copies of it for $100 because it's out of print. And I'm saying like, what? This is just a ham radio book. There's nothing that special about it. But these people, few people have a copy of it and they're looking for suckers. So I just look around and I eventually find it for $10 and buy it in another used bookstore. So I'm just saying that that's true about eBay too. Sometimes they put on a ridiculous price just hoping someone will buy it and not shop around. So you gotta be careful. So anyway, I decide I'm stuck with this. I don't have any other options. This is $17. Uh, so what I decide to do 
and it seems to work very well. First, I forget that there's not a thermometer in there because I figure maybe it's not that accurate. I have a thermometer that I can use, uh, a darkroom thermometer fit all the way down in if if I needed to do that, me actually measure the temperature in the tank, which usually you don't. You can just measure the temperature of the liquids. You could set this in a liquid bath so that all the, the tank and everything comes to the right temperature. But then what I did is I just took out my uh, my bushcraft knife, which is just a, you could do it with a pocket knife too. And you see this big mess of glue where they glued this together while forgetting to put the thermometer in it. Uh, maybe the thermometer's all broke and they broke them apart and stuck them back together. All I do is go in there and I shave the edges until it works. So now I have a tank that does indeed turn and I can develop my 16 millimeter film now. So I'm just gonna caution you if you want to do 16 millimeter film this tank was available for $17 online. One of the camera companies that sells a lot, I guess I'll just say their name, Adorama, because I thought they were really nice saying, oh, we'll get one right out to you as quick as we can, a new one, keep the old one. But even though the next one they sent me was defective, I just figure it's a, it's a manufacturing problem. At this point, I would just swing with it. I was easily able to modify this, so now the tank works. I don't have the thermometer, but that's really not that important. Uh, not like some other tanks where it's, it's kind of an integral part of a Minox tank, but we'll show you the Minox tank later. And uh, so there we go. Now I'll be able to develop film from the Minolta 2, which takes 16 millimeter film, but also I can develop 110 film. And just as a, an aside, let me mention that uh, certain cameras don't require the sprocket hole that's in 110 film. So you can load those cameras, like the uh, uh, Pentax 110, which is an SLR camera. And you can load that with any 16mm film because it doesn't depend on that sprocket hole for spacing. So you can just put any film in there. But you don't have to reload it in a 110 cartridge. And that sounds a lot trickier than it is. Basically you find any 110 film cartridge that's old. In other words, you don't want to buy Lomo now is making uh, 110 film in color in black and white, so that would be loaded into a new cartridge. What you want to do is find some old film, and you can find it online. Maybe you could find it in an old camera store too. And the idea, you're going to just take it and you're going to carefully snap the thing apart where it's glued. And you will find these older cartridges are fairly easy to snap apart without breaking. That might take you, you know, you might not get the first one, but you probably get the second and third one. So uh, you can take this apart, you measure the length of the 110 film, and you just cut that off of a reel of 110 film, of 16 millimeter film that you get, and you can put it in your camera if your camera doesn't use a sprocket hole. Now you've got to, I would suggest you check on subclub.org to find out whether your camera needs that sprocket hole or not, if you're going to do that. Now of course some 16 millimeter cameras are uh, assume the sprocket hole is there, the, the regular 16 millimeter uh, uh, sprocket holes are there and they take a smaller image and different things like that. But all that information, the subclub.org is an excellent resource for any of that. You can look at practically anything about sub-miniature cameras on there. And we're going to talk more about Minox, which is a smaller yet format. And uh, but so here we go the Yankee tank that does film sizes uh, 16 millimeter, 35, and 828, which 828 was just unsprocketed 35 millimeter, uh, 127, and 120, and 620. 620 was just 120 on a different size reel. Okay, so. And uh, so some of the sizes are the same. And like I say, 16 millimeter and 110, the same size. So there you go. See what develops. <laughs> I always have to throw something corny in it at the end if I can. Bye.